Are you ready for the upcoming estate and tax changes that are coming in 2024 and 25? That's what we're talking about today. All right, so today it is actually uh, September 13th, 2024. And uh, the reason I bring up the, uh, the date is some of this information is timely. So if you're watching this later, may not apply, but uh, for, for this upcoming year, very important. And so with me today, Andrew Loudon. Andrew's a state planning attorney out of Lincoln. So Andrew, thanks for, for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. And uh, so we're going to talk about some of the things that are you know pretty immediate coming up here. And I'm probably just going to have Andrew jump into it because there are some changes coming to the estate uh, and gift gift tax law. Yep. So tell tell me what, what what we should know about. Absolutely. So first of all, what is the estate and gift tax? So the estate and gift tax is coupled. Most people know that you can give as many people as you want eighteen thousand dollars a year without having any reporting requirements. That means no taxes. If I gave you eighteen thousand dollars, I don't have to pay taxes on it. You don't have to pay taxes on it. There's no reporting with the IRS. Most people. So, so that's gift. That's gifting. That's G gifting. gifting. Yep. Okay. I just write you a check for eighteen thousand. All right. Now I think most of your viewers know that. What most people don't know, I call this the Paul Harvey on this one. The rest of the story. Okay. Yeah. The Paul Harvey is if you've never given anyone more than that eighteen thousand dollars, and you can give ten people eighteen thousand dollars, and you still don't uh, have any reporting requirements. Right, right. You still have your lifetime exclusion from the estate and gift tax of whatever the amount is in the year that you die. And that's what is uh, potentially going to change. Now, we are currently under, as Ryan said, this is September 13th, 2024. We are currently under the Tax Act of 2017, the Trump Tax Act. That expires at the end of 2025. The current exemption per American is very large. It's $13.6 million okay. that you right. can give away during your lifetime or at death. So if you've given never given anyone more than the annual amount, it goes up every year, you still have 13.6. That's why a lot of people haven't talked about it the last few years, because we have a few clients that are worth north of that, but not many. So what we're worried about is that after the end of 2025, if whomever's president, and we're sitting here less than two months before the presidential election, right, so right. we don't know who's going to win. Right. It's a dead heat race. But whomever is president next year and whomever is in Congress next year, if they don't do anything, then the law will expire by its own terms and go back to the 2011 exemption amount of $5 million. So it'll be indexed for inflation. We're not sure what that's going to be, but that's a big difference from 13.6. 13.6 back to $5 million right, if right. the law expires right. as it's written. And, and it's, it's important because if you are worth more than that exemption, right, right now it's a 40% tax. That is exactly right. And, yep. it, and the old law was actually 50% tax, right? That's correct. That's right. So if you so let's say I will just make a big big number. If I'm worth twenty million today, and the exemption is, can I round it to fourteen to sure. make the math you easy? Bet. Yeah. So I'm six million over that mm -hmm. exemption. If I die today, forty percent of that six million, two point four million, is going to Uncle Sam right. instead of my family. That's exactly right. Now keep in and mind, if, and if it drops back to five million, yeah, now, you don't want to do that now. Math. Fifteen million. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Okay. So that's bad. Keep in mind, All a right. married couple with proper estate planning can double the exemption. So right. uh, if you're a married couple, that 14 is going to be 28, right? Okay. And that 5 is going to be 10. So, you know, uh, many of the people that we work with are worth less than 10 million, but especially business owners, ag producers with the value of where land is at, they're getting nervous. And rightfully so. It could be a problem. Yeah. But, you know, business owners, real estate, I mean, the numbers get can get big pretty quick. That's right. Quick. That's exactly right. Um, so that law is we still have some time right so what should what should we be doing right now now is the time to make an appointment with your financial advisor with your accountant with your attorney to talk about what's the plan and i will say that if it's this time next year if it's september of 2025 you're probably too late because mm -hmm. a lot of times the plan is we're going to gift significant assets before the expiration of the tax law and if that's the case there's work that has to be done. We have to do appraisals for, of the business or the real estate. 
We've got to work with the accountant on the 709 as a gift tax return. Right. If you wait uh, until right up to the deadline, it's going to be a problem. So if any of your viewers have concerns about the expiration of this law, especially higher net worth individuals, it's time to go see your attorney, financial advisor, or accountant. So it isn't, it isn't the fact that the law is going to kick in a year from now because it's not. Right. It's, it's, you know, end of 25, it's just like, it doesn't just happen at the, exactly. at the flip of a switch. That's exactly right. Because things are more complicated than that. That's, that's exactly right. And so paint your picture of next year. We could have a President Trump and a Democratic House. That's a real possibility. Okay. Or you could have a President Harris and a Republican Senate. That's also a very real possibility. And both of those mean gridlock. Now, it's usually good when Congress doesn't do anything. Hmm. This is an exception to that rule because right. if they don't do something, it's going to go back down and we're going to have a much bigger exposure to the, the estate tax. To the estate tax. Okay. Yep. All right. So we, uh, there, uh, the one thing I also want to talk about in Nebraska, there's this inheritance tax. Thing. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, it's embarrassing. In Nebraska, we're one of five, soon to be only four states in the country that has our own transfer tax. It used to be that everybody did, but over the last 25 years, almost everyone's gotten rid of it. The political reason we still have it is it's our counties who collect the tax, not the state. So our 93 counties, we're here in Antelope County, Nebraska. Now, Ryan, you know there's three counties that are named after animals in Nebraska. Okay. Did you know that? I did so not. We're what sitting in one. We got antelope, right. of course. We got buffalo and Garfield. Garfield. Okay. Great. Thank, you. thank you very much. Great. Okay. So anyway, our 93 counties collect that tax. And... It's a pain. I call it a nuisance. And we, we tax people based on how they're related to the person who died. Spouses pay zero. And this is independent of the estate tax that's that we right. just talked about, This right? is our own little transfer tax that's okay. super annoying to Nebraskans. Children pay a 1% tax after a $100,000 exemption. Okay. So if you have three kids and you have a $500,000 estate, 300000 is zero, 200000 is taxed at 1%. So $2,000. Not a big deal, but it's just a, still, it's, it's still it's real something, money. Still something, yeah. Um, where this tax gets regressive and is just frankly unfair is we punish people who don't have children in Nebraska. It's very unfortunate. You and I both have a lot of clients who do not have children. And most of them leave their money to their nieces or nephews. Right. Nieces or nephews only get the first 50000 tax-free, and then they pay 11% wow. of every dollar to the county. It gets worse. If you leave money to someone who, to whom you're not related... I met with two people in our Omaha office yesterday who are not married. They've lived together as spouses for 20 years, but they don't want to get married. Guess what? We don't have common law marriage in Nebraska. There is in Iowa. They could move across the river to Council Bluffs and be married. But in Nebraska, you get the first 25000 tax-free, and then, ouch, 13% of every dollar is taxed to the county. So Are they getting married now after you told them that? That was my strong advice. <laughs> And I think wow. I did. I, I think I got some people to, to get married. Maybe, yeah. yeah. So, um, but here's the things that your viewers should know is there's two types of property that are not taxed by the Nebraska inheritance tax. Life insurance to a named beneficiary is exempt. I don't know why. I think they've just, the life insurance industry must have really good lobbyists. Right, right. But be careful because a trust can be a beneficiary, but not an estate. Hmm. So if you leave your life insurance to your trust, that's exempt. But if it just defaults to your estate, that's subject to the inheritance tax. So that's a bad result. Okay. The other thing is real estate in another state. You buy a home in Arizona, not taxed by the Nebraska inheritance tax. Right. But everything else is. Well, and that's and that applies also if you um, live out of state but own property right. in Nebraska, right? That's that correct. property is subjected to that Nebraska inheritance tax. That's exactly right. So I have moved to Florida because it's sunny and there's no state income tax. Right. But I still own a farm in Antelope County. Guess what? When I die, Neely's going to get a check for the value of, of that farm ground. That's okay. right. Okay. What else should we know? Is there anything else out there that you've been thinking about recently? Well, because of these changes that are coming up in the law, it's really important to make sure that you have your documents in place so that you can easily pivot. A lot of people don't have trusts yet, and trusts are usually the vehicle that we use, or maybe even an LLC, to gift assets to your children over time. And that's what we're going to see a lot of, I, th I think, is people who are concerned about 
these elections, you know, going back and forth every time, right. is to have the vehicles in place or the strategies in place. It can be as simple as setting up an account in your office and being ready to transfer assets from one account to another. Right. It can be as simple as setting up an LLC and be able to transfer units that own ground. But unless you have all of those mechanisms in place, you're going to be behind the eight ball. So do the prep work now. Right. You might not use all of that prep Maybe work, not. but it better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. That's exactly right. And yep. and probably there may be law changes again in the future where you could use some of those changes anyway, potentially. Would that be accurate? Absolutely. I mean, in this current political environment, going back and forth between the parties, I think that's fair to say, pretty safe to say that'll keep being the case, keep that we're the, gonna, case. the laws are going to continue to to change, which is very frustrating because it makes it difficult for financial advisors and attorneys to give our clients good advice because without the crystal ball of knowing what the laws are going to be in the year that you die, right. um, we just have to plan for all the contingencies. And I would say, I mean, I would say we're probably, an, we're an easier, quicker change on things that we do. Yeah. You're going to be the slower I agree. change, you know, and, and you're going to get booked up quicker on these things yep. also. So, you know, make sure, you know, you're getting in to see, you know, Andrew or your estate planning attorney uh, and having these conversations sooner, sooner than later, definitely. That's right. Uh, anything else? Anything else we missed? Or is that kind of the, nope. big, the big thing right Times now? Times of the essence. It's all about the end of 2025. And so uh, stay tuned. We're going to see what happens. All right. Well, thanks, Andrew. I appreciate right. your yeah. expertise. You bet. And, you know, if this is valuable for you, you know, please share this with somebody that you, you know and care about. You know, especially now, you know, share it sooner than later because it is, this is timely information uh, uh, for, uh, you know, the immediate future. And uh, we'll uh, see you next time.